Alright, welcome back to my layer. You're back with the Teezy Burger Burger Wing Smoke Fest here. I'll be back with episode 298 of my game review of episode 298 part 5, a 5 part on the Legacy of Kane franchise here. We're down to the final game here in this franchise. So, yeah, we have a lot to talk about. Last time I took a look at Blood Omen 2, gave it a 6 out of 10 because the game, while it was average, it had some issues with it, like, like the repetitive gameplay, the camera, and more. It's still a good game in the series, but proceed with caution is all. Now let's go to the year 2003. Back when I was entering high school and everything like that, I was freshman high school. We back with one more game here of the, of the Legacy of Kane franchise called Legacy of Kane Defiant. We can play as both Kane and Raziel to wrap up the story here. And with some more clues throughout the story and more. At least on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox the same day, and then Microsoft Windows later on the same year. Let's get started, ladies and gentlemen. Arr! Well, everyone, here we are. The final game of the Legacy of Kane franchise. Everything comes to a close. Everything wraps up here for the most part. Well, at least we believe. Usually, when it is the last game of the franchise, it's either the best game or the worst game. With Legacy of Kane Defiance, fans wanted closure for the series. They want all the unanswered questions to be answered, and more. Does Legacy of Kane Defiance deliver on this and more? Is it the best game in the franchise itself? The answer is yes. It wraps things up and answers the questions we've been wanting the answers for. But, is it a good game? It is a good game, just not the best game in the franchise. Soul Weaver 1 and 2 were better. It's still enjoyable, though. I mean, it is still decent, it's still worth owning, but the other couple games were better. It's better than Blood Omen 2, but yeah, let's get started here. The story of Legacy of Kane Defiance takes place immediately after Soul Weaver 2, where Kane saved Raziel's life by drawing Soul Weaver from him. Raziel was meant to enter the Soul Weaver Blade and its soul devouring spectral half. When all this happened, it created a time paradox that changed Nazgul's history and made it even worse. When this happens, it separated Kane and Raziel. The story is broken up into two parts, one for Kane and one for Raziel. You play one level as Kane, the next level Raziel, then the next Kane, next Raziel, kinda like does that. Kane's story follows him sticking out Mobius, the guardian from Soul River 2, for answers to where Raziel is and how he changed the time of Nazgoth and more. During Kane's quest, he finds pieces of a broken talisman of a vampire known as the Balanced Emblem that dictates an ancient war going on between the Ancients and the Hydlin, racing to first inhabit Nazgoth. There is more to the story, but can I say any more about it? But Raziel's story takes place 500 years later during the time of the Blood Open Legacy of Kane game. Raziel is held captive by the Elder God where he escapes and travels to Nazgul hoping to find a way to avoid his fate of being imprisoned in the Soul Weaver. Raziel then, then finds Bordor, the creator of Soul Weaver, and tells Raziel that the only person who can give the answers is the deceased Janos of Arden. When Raziel travels to Avenue's Cathedral to revive Janos by finding his heart, he finds murals of, of, the, of, of the Hydland and Ancients that show them committing suicide in horror of the immortality and also discovers that the ancients worship the elder god who decreed all their souls in the cycle of life and death. This is was known as the wheel of fate, but the souls cannot foil this because they were immortal and the ancients became the bane of entity once they were revealed. Both stories together mesh really well. Sure they have separate reasons why they're doing these tasks, but the story fits really well as well as, as like a conclusion, a wrap up and more. However, there are times where it can get confusing trying to follow everything closely trying to figure out what is going on. The story was excellent the best part of Legacy of Kane Defiance. Legacy of Kane Defiance's presentation aspects they are good, but not much has changed though. By the time of 2003, the graphics were starting to show its age. I mean, it looked good from a certain perspective, but with someone who played the other two Legacy of Kane on PlayStation 2, and Blood Omen, and Soul Weaver 2, and you know, all of them, more could have been done with the presentation. Sure, Kane and Raja look great and well done, they're the best character models of the graphics along with some supporting characters, but any models look generic looking to the point where you wonder what happened here. They're just basic soldiers and ghosts and other types of creatures. Sure this, this was somewhat of a problem in the other games, but this was, was the fifth and final game in the franchise. You'd think they would have bigger variety. The environments look good, they are big and there's a variety of them, however a lot of the rooms look similar to one another making it easy to get lost. Also, no map screen here. How are you supposed to know where to go? when most of the rooms look similar to one another and they're big and you know you drop down you're in the wrong room that's a pain in the neck having to backtrack all over again 
The cutscenes look great, a lot of them are in game, but both those and CJ cutscenes look great and are probably the best part of the presentation. The blood is here once again, mainly in Kane's levels, he drinks the blood of the victims and rather absorbs the souls. Legacy of Kane defines the sound aspect is pretty good here too. The voice editing is the best part. All the actors sound fantastic. And you know what's even better? Simon Templeman and Michael Bell return to reprise their roles again as Kane and Raziel. This is amazing how they kept the same voice actors for these characters in all five of the games in the franchise. Very rarely this happens, with the exception of Metal Gear Solid Mass Effect, not counting Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zero, so talk about the first four Metal Gear games. The music was okay. I did not really care much for the music, but I can take what I can get, I guess. Legacy of Kane Defiance's gameplay aspect is good, but you think with two characters they would combine both the gameplay elements in one. The truth is they do not. It's good to say decent to say the least. Both Kane and Raziel play very similar to one another, meaning they both attack the enemies with their weapons. Kane has swords and Raziel has a soul reaver. Both the gameplay aspects are killing enemies, getting a key item, getting from point A to point B. Nothing wrong here for the most part, but come on, they could have changed the gameplay for both characters. They both platform, they both kill enemies, they both navigate these big areas and go from point A to point B. It's like imagine Raziel being a stealth character, while Kane is a battle character, etc. They could have done that. Sure, the settings are different, but you spend majority of time platforming, killing enemies, and more. It can also be a pain navigating with no map because you can get lost, but thankfully it is not as bad. However, some of the items are hard to find or figure out where you're going and you'll be at shore. That is because the camera is the bad guy here. The camera is not the best once again. Here it is a little worse because it makes it hard to find key items. You'll run it all around trying to figure out where to go, only to realize it was right there all along. This will happen a lot, and I mean a lot. There are fun things here like being able to break walls to get through the new area, you can drink the blood of the enemies, jump to high places, and more as Kane. You can go through bar-like doors or windows, you can glide to, to get to other platforms, you can absorb souls, and more as Raziel. They both have their own abilities, but like I mentioned, they play very similarly to one another. Fighting the enemies does not require much of a strategy here, just do the same attacks over and over and you'll defeat them. You have combos and special moves, but they really do not factor much at all. They are not necessary here, they also be a pain to pull off because you can use the analog sticks and the D-pad to make the, to like make make the combos and the special moves and everything. We make things easier for the other way around using D-pad. There are no puzzles to solve at all, just basically mash, mash, kill the enemies like a button masher. And you know, using the same attack over and over again, it, it becomes very tedious and monotonous. If you play the other few games, you'll see that very little has changed here. Like I said, the game, while good, could have been better because of these quirks. I only played the PlayStation 2 version, but here the Xbox version was not as good due to the graphical problems, the worst controls, and more. Windows version did not play. The PlayStation version is the best one here. Now, before we can give this game a score here, you know, Legacy Defiance was a good game, but could have been better. It felt a little rushed, and it felt tedious and monotonous, and felt like not much has changed. So that's why I'm saying here. But now, let's go give this game a score with our TT Burr pros and cons here. With the TT Burr pros, Legacy Kane is back for the grand finale of the series. Kane and Razo are both playable characters here. The story wraps up almost all the unanswered questions we had. Excellent voice set, especially from Simon Templeman and Michael Bell. Decent graphics for the most part. Kane can drink blood and Razo can absorb souls once again. Kane and Razo's character models look very detailed. Huge environment with big variety. For the TT Burr cons, while it is great to play as Kane and Razo in this game, they both play very similarly to one another. All you basically do is kill the enemies and look for items. While the graphics are good, they're starting to show its age. Fighting enemies requires very little strategy like a button masher. The camp system is still not very good where you can miss key items. No map screen this time, making it easy to get lost. There are no puzzles to solve here at all, and not much has changed in the previous entries, which is what I gotta say about Legacy Kane Defiance. It's not a bad game, it's just an okay good game. That's why I gotta say there. With that being said though, with the score here, I can only give this game a 7 out of 10 because of the problems here. Still a good game, but still, could have been better. Arr! Now when it comes to the Legacy of Kane franchise here, we have 5 games for you to look at. Even though some of them were better than the others, I still recommend all of them because with the story continuing, 2 playable characters, 2 great likable characters, memorable characters, with a little roar to it, it does not worth checking out for sure. And we have wrapped up TT Burger Burger Wing Spook Fest, the first, the first ever of that. 
The regular reviews will continue after that. And stay tuned, there's more to come, including the 300th episode. We're itching closer and closer to that. I have some very big plan for that. I'm going to give you more details along the way. But in the meantime, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot more on the way. I recommend you all checking out here. And thank you all for joining my TT Burger Burger Spook Fest. The game reviews will continue. You can look out for that, everyone. So, do it! Peace out, buddy. Have a great day.